everyone, the Game Chief here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on installing and setting up the ZT or the Zombie Toast vending machine mod onto your Daisy server. So I already have the workshop page here, it'll also be in the description. But let's go ahead and get remoted into my server so we can get started. Alrighty, and since we're remoted in, I'm going to go and open up my web browser here. I am using Omega Manager, but you do not have to. You can be using any, you know, server manager software or just bash scripts up to you. We're just going to go ahead and shut down the server that we're using here so we can go ahead and make these changes real fast. And now that's off, I'm going to go ahead and go into the overview. And we'll go over to mod configuration. And we're going to go ahead and scroll down and we have the mod list here. So we're going to go ahead and search for ZT vending. So there it is, ZT vending machine. With over 300,000 subscriptions, so that's the one. We'll go ahead and press add on that. And currently it's not installed, of course. We'll go ahead and save changes. And then if you're not using Omega Manager, you would, of course, just download it from the workshop and copy it into your main folder. If you're using Bash Scripts, you've probably downloaded mods before. You should know how to go ahead and download it and just move it in there. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the home page here. Right here, it might say install untracked mods. If it does, go ahead and click on that so it can go ahead and pull it down. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to quickly start our server. So this is going to ensure that the mod is downloaded and moved into this folder. And we'll give this just a moment and then we'll turn it off because there is some config changes we'll need to make. And it's reading the mission, so we should be good to go here. I'm going to go ahead and shut that down. And now that we have that off again, we can see that the ZT vending machine is showing up here in our mods. And if we open up our file browser and have a look here in servers, Daisy Server 0 is my server that we're using here. So that can be different depending on your install. We do see that the mod folder is here. If it wasn't for some reason, it's worth doing a force upstream check, restarting the server and turning it back off to see if it appears. Usually that helps, or maybe you have an unsaved config change or something like that. And if we look in here, there's a few things. There's this how to read texture folder, which tells you how to go ahead and make your own textures for this if you'd like to. That's not going to be covered in this video, but if you guys are interested in it, definitely let me know in the comments and there might be a future video on retexturing those. And then there's also the item ids.txt, which we're going to go ahead and open because we're going to want to go ahead and use that. And I'm actually going to go ahead and open this in my preferred text editor, which is Atom. You can use Notepad or Notepad++ or whatever. It's just this is my preferred one. It makes this a little easier. So next, we do need to go ahead and edit our trader config files to use the appropriate uh, vending machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the Atom editor here, which has you know, the file browser built into it. I'm going to go ahead and go over to servers, server zero, and then we're going to go into profiles. And then in profiles, if we look around, there's the trader one. And we're going to open two files here. We're going to open trader config and trader objects. We're going to need both of these. And by looking in this file, it does give us some information such as, you know, all the traders and what order they are in. The reason why it's important to know what order they are in is if we go over to trader objects here, this is just the markers, so we'll skip that. But right here is the objects to spawn. It just spawns a NPC for the object. It doesn't actually tell you which one it is, but we can tell here by going over to trader, this one correlates to this one right here. And the same thing, the second one will correlate to the second trader. So if we scroll down here a little bit. So we have that second trader. And then, of course, we do have our item IDs here. I'm going to drag this over to the right so we can kind of keep that on the side here. There are multiple versions of the vending machines. So you have your normal vending machines. You have your rusty versions of them. Then you also have the glow versions, so the normal one and then the rusty one. In my case, I think I'm just going to use the regular ones, but this one is totally up to you. Just make sure you're looking at the appropriate one. If you want rusty, you'll use these class names, you know, all that stuff. But we'll go up to the top here. And we'll go ahead and get started here. So our first trader, as we can see here, is going to be this model, character model. And if we go back and reference our trader config, we can see that's the consumables trader. So what we're going to do is find an appropriate vending machine. I'm going to go ahead and use the consumable ones as that makes the most sense in this case. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to go ahead and replace that. And then right here, the trader mod has actually already included this for us, which is great. 
but it says you need to attach the NPC dummy if you are not using an actual NPC because we're using an object versus a actual character. And this comment tells you that right there if you're using, you know, a non-character object like vending machines. And we need it and that way the user action will actually work. So this is actually commented out. That's what the two slashes mean. So we're going to remove those two comments. So now this NPC dummy will be attached and this will work. And it's important to note this NPC dummy isn't on all of these, so we'll have to copy this and paste it. But we'll get to that in a moment. So we're going to go over to Trader 2. And as we can see here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the word Trader here. And we're going to find the next one, which is going to be the Misc one. And what we'll do is we'll find the vending machine that matches, which is this one. So we'll copy that. And then we'll go ahead and replace the NPC again with that. And of course, we have to go ahead and copy this attachment. So I'm going to highlight that entire line. And then I'm going to add that right below the object orientation. So I'll paste that in there and do some formatting real fast. So it attaches that NPC dummy. Again, if we don't add it, the action's not going to work. So we can move on to our next person. So if we check here, we press enter to move on. Looks like it's going to be our weapon trader. So I'm going to select the weapons vending machine, copy that. I'm going to go ahead and click on this, paste that in there. And again, make sure you copy your NPC. So we got that added in there right below the orientation again. You don't have to copy the comment. I'm just doing it because I'm doing it that way. Just as long as you do the attach object or object attachment NPC dummy. And we'll scroll down to the next one. And then if we look here, this is just spawning some additional objects for the trader. So that is perfectly fine. And then this is where my other trader starts. So this first one was all for Green Mountain. And then if we look over here, we do have the other trader location. And this is, you know, the exact same thing. It's going to be the same order and everything. We can quickly do this real fast, though. So if we scroll up to the top. And just doing a quick once over on this, it looks like everything is working as expected. So I'm going to go ahead and save this object file. Now that this has been modified. And of course, at the very top of this file, we do have all of our markers for these traders and the individual people or, you know, thing that is the trader. So you're zero through five. So six different objects. Um, we are doing this as a standard one. So, you know, six objects and they all line up in this order because that's how you modify your trader file. There's some more details if you really had an advanced use case, but this is just going based off the default one. And what we'll go ahead and do is open up our web browser again. And we're going to go ahead and restart our server and make sure everything looks good. Alrighty, and now that that is up, we will go ahead and join and make sure everything's working as expected. Alrighty, and we have the launcher open here and we can see our server. We see that the ZT vending machine is showing up there as well. So again, if your new mods aren't showing up, make sure you requery on the Daisy Sand launcher. It should be automatic, but if it doesn't, do that manually and we'll go ahead and hit play and we'll verify this all working. Alrighty, and we are in game and at the trader here. And if we go to have a look, we do see some obvious issues if you're using the default one immediately, like that these are in the ground and also being blocked by certain things. I'm gonna just delete that shed so we can look here though. We can see it did actually spawn the correct vending machine. However, of course, we're going to have to fix this orientation and all that. So let's go ahead and press F here. And we can see that it does work, though. So we know the usability actually works. It's just we're going to have to update the positioning a little bit. And we'll go over here again. We see this stuff's just kind of chilling in there. I'm just going to delete that so we can look at it. And 
and yep, this one is the weapons one like we expected and does work. Same thing with the ammunition one. Looks like that works. We'll delete that shack there and see, yep, the consumable ones works as well. And right now we're just making sure that the base one works and we can make some changes to fix this. And our misc one seems to work fine. We probably didn't even need to delete that shack. And we can't delete this building because it's a base one, but if we look here, we can see, yep, that one works for the clothing. And that's all six of our traders, and we do have ATMs, and if you're wondering about ATMs, definitely check out my video on that. So let's go ahead and take a look about how to fix these. So you can definitely use your favorite admin tool to go ahead and copy your location and make small edits to the trader file and the object location. You'll also want to make sure you're updating the orientation for it to make sense. However, in my case, since I'm using a default trader, it's completely the default Green Mountain one. What I'm going to do instead is someone has done the hard work for us, and I'll link a link to this thread in the description below as always as well. And this already has some positions set up that work. And what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this onto my other monitor and we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste these to update these with that location that this person has already figured out for us. So we'll drag that over there, we'll go back into here, and we can shut down our server in the meantime as well. And we have that set up right there. And what we'll do is we'll scroll down here because we'll have to update those positions here, of course, as well. And then looking at this other file, it looks like the other person actually used tools here, which is correct. Necessarily, this is the tools one, not a misc one. Again, it's kind of interchangeable, so you can swap that around. But I'll update that to tools because that does make a little more sense here. And then in this example that we have here, they do use some slightly different props. And because the other ones might be interfering, so, you know, some of the, say, the wagon and stuff like that, I am going to copy this, but this is totally up to you on how you want your trader to look. But I'm going to copy this as our example, so I copied that entire block. And we're going to scroll up and replace it with these other objects that were there that do cause some issues just based off of where those vending machines are spawning. And then that's all the, for the first trader here. And if we look again at this thread, they did provide what they're using for the other default trader. So once again, we're gonna go ahead and use that again, just as a base setup. And we got the markers set up. We'll go and scroll down past the green mountain section and go ahead and update this area right here. Again, I'm going to update this with tools instead. It's again up to you, it's your traders, so whatever you want it to be. And one thing I completely forgot to mention is when you're removing this, you can go ahead and remove all these other objects because these are no longer, you know, humans. You don't want to add these certain things to their inventory or, you know, clothing and stuff like that. Um, what you can do is you can comment it out if you are not sure if you're going to use this later. So I'm just going to go ahead and comment all these out in case, you know, I decide to switch back to AI. So we'll do that double slash there, comments all that out, and I'll do that for the rest of these objects as well.
And now that we got those all commented out, so of course we don't need those, but in case we decide to switch back to using NPCs versus the vending machines. And once again, if we look at the provided file, it does have some different basic ones that we can use or basic other objects. I am going to copy this again, just because I don't want to have to deal with the possible issues with these vehicles spawn, stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all this. Paste that in there. We'll go ahead and save this. And we're going to go ahead and start the server and see what it all looks like. Alrighty, and we are back inside our server now. And as we can see here, some of those buildings are gone. The ATMs are still here. Those vending machines are not inside the building anymore. And with that config file, they're actually all right over here. So as we can see here, we have all the different ones. So we're just gonna make sure they all work. So yep, our clothing one works, our tools, yep, that all works. Our weapons one works, ammunition slash attachments, looks like that works. Our consumables, yep, that all works. So it looks like this one is good to go and we can go check on the other one and see if that one's working as well. And we are now at the other one. And as we can see here, we have our vehicles one over here. Clothing, all the same stuff, consumables, tools. We still have our ATMs, of course. Got our ATM over there, along with our other attachments here. And then weapons over here. So that all looks good to go. And that's about it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or go ahead and join my Discord server, which is always in the video description. Joining the Discord servers allows you to DM me and there's also the support channel that allows other people and myself to jump in and try to help resolve issues that you may be having. And I will go ahead and try to remember to leave a link to this Trader Objects file. So this one is like the preset one. You know, it's kind of the base one with just those small changes there. Again, that'll be in the video description. And if you guys have any video suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. And other than that, have a good one.